Hey, this is Brendan Small, and you're watching Heavy Consequence. What was the first song that you wrote for Death Album 4? Aortic Desecration. Because Death Album 4 was a completely different process than any other Death Clock record. Because right. every other Death Clock record were like kind of these bits and pieces, these kind of leftovers from episodes that I would cobble into full songs mm -hmm. by the end of the season. So I'd have like a 20 episode season and I'd have 20 songs or 20 bits and pieces of songs. And I would have to like go, all right, this seemed to resonate with the audience. That seemed to resonate with the audience. Let's make sure. I think this is cool. The people that I work with like this. So this, and then what do I, what do I want to take all the way to the finish line? And I was still learning what I was doing. And then death album four was basically, here's all brand new stuff you've never heard. You had, and this is in, you know, except for like mermaid or three, which kind of references a melody and a rhythm style. Everything else is totally new. With mermaid or though. Um, yeah as being the one that's kind of as far as like a concept of a song, a theme of a song been consistently there throughout mm -hmm. that discography. Like, was there also um, a sort of like mode that you had in mind when it came to maybe not concluding that like series of Mermaider, but like getting to where lyrically it is now, like. In Mermaider, it starts out with like a battle of, of underwater creatures in Mermaider 2 one of them kind of uh, goes against, you know, the water gods and becomes its own god. And, and Mermaid or Three is kind of like a tragic Macbeth story about a dying king and he's visited by these mermaids who say the end of the world is coming and you've got everyone, you spent your life ruining things and destroying and destroying. This is your last chance to maybe bring people together and fight against a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like a, 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 an underwater king's lament, but he knows he's going down and what can he do? So he pulls the elements together. He pulls fire and, and the, the wind and the earth together and, and tries to battle a bigger evil. And that's kind of what the song is about. So it's, it's crazy lore. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just, it's invented for this. It's like a secondary story that's going on throughout Metalocalypse. There's this underwater kind of mysticism that's happening. And, um, and that's that's part of the whole thing. So so I thought I would love to end the record with this Viking funeral of a song. And it's kind of a Viking funeral of the whole thing where it's just big and bombastic. And it's something that you could consider seeing on Broadway or, you know, it's like a moment from Evita or Les Mis or something like that. <laughs> so seriously. And yeah. like I watched all that stuff as a kid. My family played, you know, anytime stories being told in music, I am really, really really interested from king diamond to andrew lloyd weber i'm mm -hmm. i'm there you know from metallica mm -hmm. talking about a movie to anthrax talking about stephen king to whatever it is i'm interested when people tell story with music because i think that's just it's such a great way to tell story so um so yeah so that was kind of like that's that's the whole idea is how can i how can i make this as as um baroque classical and over the top as i can and uh and uh empower you know through mm -hmm. it you know how can you empower and what am i empowering i'm not sure but it's it's uh but that's what heavy metal does there's something really empowering about the good stuff you know that really works how was that decision made to go with baby metal like did you specifically pick baby metal to be the co-headliners or like how did that process go um it was really simple and it was like one day and someone just said, Hey, what about baby metal? And I said, that's crazy. And that sounds like they put on such a great show mm -hmm. and uh, their music is so bonkers and bombastic. And it also is um, it's uh, it's nothing like what we do, but I do think there's like a, a quality and an entertainment, like a uh, high mark that they hit. Mm -hmm. And I think if we did this together, we would have an evening of one of the most entertaining shows you're going to see um, out there. Who are some of your favorite metal bands right now? I'll always love Cannibal Corpse as being one of the greats. Um, I listen to a lot of Nile lately. That's just, I mean, it's so bonkers how intense and musical and thoughtful um, they are, and I'd say the same thing about Cannibal Corpse too. They're they're right. just always pushing the envelope. I think Alex Webster is a genius lyricist and a riff maker, and I think his whole band and George, his boys, and everything is great. Niall is 
I'd say the same thing. I think they're always pushing the envelope and they work so hard to get great results. I, of course, I love, you know, all the kind of, I love with sugar. That new record is so nuts to me that like, it's, mm. it's so moody and interesting. Mm. Um, I uh, see, I don't know. I mean, I, I go back to the same stuff over and over again. And when I'm making death clock records, I go back to what I was thinking. Like when I'm listening, guitar, when I'm thinking about Squish Guard's guitar playing, Hmm. There are like a couple guitar players. I go, I got to listen to these guys and I got to check this out for a while to get kind of back into Squish Guard. Cause I play guitar all the time. And what I play doesn't always sound like Death Clock stuff. So I have to really kind of like get into character when I'm putting that stuff together. Hmm. Cause I'm like, I'm a nerd. I'm like trying to learn fusion and nerdy stuff. And like, you know, cause that's also like that, that proggy futurist kind of like Meshuggah stuff that I think is right. influenced. Their DNA is everywhere now. I think it's, it's influenced me. And rightly so, because it is powerful. And what they're doing is scary and conceptually difficult. Um, but I love I love all my favorite. Oh, that Mr. Bungle record that came out to me blew my mind also, because it was like, um, it sounded like one of the great thrash metal bands that never existed, that never was, but then kind of came together. So, and listening to Scott and all those SOD references and all that stuff, that's like right in my DNA too, because mm -hmm. Scott Ian and, and Anthrax was like there when I was first starting guitar and I was really, you know, the sound of that really made a lot of sense to me. The, right. Scott against right hand, Metallica, of course.